In race one at Monza, it was the fast Puerto Rican Felix Sorales who claimed pole, Carlos Sainz Jr. sitting alongside. A shout at the start forced everybody to pit for rain tyres. Sainz emerged in a lead he was never to relinquish, heading for his first British F3 win. Still the first race of the weekend. Still really a lot of championship to go, but now it's time to enjoy this moment because it's really special for me. Time for race two here at Monza, and as you can see, the conditions have got significantly worse for all of us. It's really tipping it down now. In fact, it's going to be wet and slippy out on the track. And as you can see, it is a reverse grid, meaning Carlos Sainz Jr., who actually won the first race, he drew 10th, so he's way back there. Nonetheless, on pole, as before, is Felix Sorales. So here we go then for round five of the Cooper Tires British Formula 3 International Series. Getting underway after two laps behind the safety car field led by the red and white car of Felix Sorales, the pole man for race one. As the top ten are inverted, gets pole for race two from Fami Ilias. These are truly shocking conditions. Rained almost ceaselessly since the end of qualifying in the beginning of race one. And Saturday, wet Sunday, very wet indeed. Away goes the Puerto Rican driver. Second, Fami Ilias. Third place, the white car of Nick McBride. You can see Jasmine Jafar dug out of the spray just to find out where the start line is. And in the spray behind the leader, it is going to be very dangerous indeed for everybody. Fami Ilias in second with the blue side pods, the silver nose, the white car, Nick McBride. Blue, white and red, that's Jack Harvey in fourth place off the grid. Nobody, I think, is going to make up places on purpose up to the first corner. It might well happen by mistake. On board with Jack Harvey, that's the view. No windscreen wipers, indeed no windscreen. Once you're following a car on the straight, you are doing it absolutely blind. So Sorales, a great opportunity here to recover from the pit stops forced by rain yesterday that cost him any chance of a second win in the championship. Well, the yellow nose there of Carlos Sainz, 10th away at the start. And this is going to be a waiting game, a game of survival. If you're at the front, you might be able to see. If you're not, like Jack Harvey, you've got to look through the corners because once you get on the straight, you're blind. Well, Harvey looking down the inside of Nick McBride's white machine, car number 12. Couldn't quite get through there between the Lesmos. Now it's the run down to the Ascari chicane and see he's staying out of the slipstream. Normally at Monza that would be the place to be, but when you are in the direct wake of the car in front, as you can see, it just becomes a whiteout. Sorales leads, Ilias in second, then the battle for third. McBride still in front of Jack Harvey. And incidentally, we've lost Hannes von Asseldonk. The Dutch driver went off in the rain before they got the start. So that's moved everybody behind him up one. Here comes Harvey. Now the straight's wide enough. Never mind the slipstream. Visibility is all that counts here. Looking down desperately to see the braking area. Ilias very offline into the braking area at the Parabolica. Harvey on the inside of McBride. And it is tippy toes around the outside for Nick McBride. He hangs on. Harvey's car twitching viciously as he tries to get on the power earlier. Fifth place is Pietro Fantin, Alex Lynn behind him. And Sorales streaking away now. Well, Sorales, this is playing very nicely for him. He's the only man who could actually see where he's going. And, whoa, nonetheless, makes a mistake under braking. And that is going to cost him potentially Nick McBride in second place still. So where is Fami Ilias gone? Ilias has vanished from second on the straight. We saw him very offline into the Parabolica. Well, he has vanished. Looks like he might have rejoined the track further back. But this now then, the battle for second. I'd be astonished if Jack Harvey has any idea who is in front of him and that if Fami Ilias actually went off. Harvey still struggling for visibility there in the middle of that three-car train because they've been caught by Pietro Fantin, car number two. Now, Fantin, of course, will have exactly the problem that Jack Harvey has, i.e. he can't see Harvey. In fact, we can't even see Fantin. It is so wet here. You can see rivers of water across the track, and they migrate. They change lap by lap as it rains more or less, and more and less runoff comes across the track. So the drivers have to be very careful indeed. 
And really, Sorales is the only man who's got any clue what's going on. You can see the spray hanging in the trees here. On board again with Harvey. Well, if this was dry, there's no doubt he would be all over McBride and maybe able to get by. This time he goes on the grippy side around the outside. And that's a great move by Jack Harvey. Committed himself early and he went. And Nick McBride clearly had enough visibility to see him coming and let him get through. There's Sykes going through and there's Elias. So he did rejoin and oh, Sorales having another big moment. He's trying to go way offline. And this is what happened at the end of the straight. Again, trying to stay way offline to try and find some grip and outbreaked himself. Well, why is he doing that? Why is he not using the normal racing line like Nick McBride? Because that's where all the other cars have left rubber and oil for the last 90 years of racing here. And that makes it very treacherous under the water. In the slipstream of McBride with Pietro Fantin now. And behind, you can see Jasmine Jafar and Alex Lynn. Fantin bouncing over the kerbs. Again, the visibility is so bad. It's not until the spray drops when the cars get down to 30 or 40 miles an hour that you can actually see the chicane. By that stage, the drivers are looking through it anyway and looking for the exit. Around Curva Grande. But frankly, you could be anywhere. If this was a computer game, you'd be worried you couldn't see anything. In real life, it's even more treacherous. Oh, and McBride, very slow there. Got the rod here completely wrong, and here comes Pietro Fantin looking for third place. Doesn't dare put it up the inside into Lesmo 1, but he's piling on the pressure. But Bright, very defensive here. The wheel spin there. Has he got a left rear over the curve, Pietro Fantin? The revs just climbed. Now, here we go. This is for third place. Good move by Fantin, and McBride seen it before, but he is staying on the defensive inside line. Going to make Fantin go the long way round. Come on, big fella, if you've got it, let's see it. Fantin in sixth gear, hanging on, being brave, but McBride has territorial advantage on the way in, and Fantin can't avoid running into him. Luckily, I think it was tyre to tyre, so no bits of wings flying off. Again, snap of oversteer on the exit as the power comes on song in this two-litre engine of his. There's a corner out there somewhere. The scary thing is there's a car in front with a high visibility rear light and we can't even see the light. Never mind the car. Turquoise of Jasman Jafar in fifth. The battle for six. Two teammates here run by the same team, Fortec Motorsport. Alex Lynn and Pipo Durrani. Watching from the pit wall or from under an umbrella somewhere is about the best place to be, I think. Oh, and Spike Goddard catches himself out down there at the Parabolica. Looks like he put a wheel on a painted line, and that's all it takes once you get onto the grass here. Oh, and straight through under braking, Nick McBride makes a mistake. Carlos Sainz Jr. there with Harry Tinknell right behind him. Tinknell from last row of the grid. So Harry's starting to make progress in these filthy conditions and Goddard is out. His perfect finishing record is now a thing of history. But what a start to the championship he's had. Four wins from four starts. That clatter with the barriers, I think, might well have shaken him up a little. There's Jasmine Jafar. A couple of years in British F3 under his belt, so he's seen these conditions before. Not at Monza, but other British race tracks. And there again is the battle for third. Nick McBride still in front of Pietro Fantin. When again, Fantin, you see a little bit of opposite lock out of Lesmo 1. As soon as you put the power down, the car just slides underneath you. This is making modern tyres feel like 1950s racing tyres, I think, where the power is greater than the grip. It's a real challenge for drivers. Imagine racing in these conditions in the 1950s, 1930s even. Around the outside goes Fantin, makes it stick this time. Don't touch him, Nick. Nick McBride manages to keep his nose out of the way. He made Pietro Fantin work hard for the podium. But in the end, Fantin did squeeze through. Yellow flags are out. And as you can see, slow Felix Sorales. 
Everybody, again, apart from Sorales, blinded by spray. So when you see a yellow flag in your periphery, you've got no idea what might be in front of you. So in these conditions, you really have to obey them. Emerging from the gloom, Sorales still leading, but the gap is coming down. Jack Harvey is coming through less dense spray at that distance as Goddard's car is drained away. I wonder how that'll leave him for race three, the final one of the day. Harvey in second then, Pietro Fountain up to third ahead of Nick McBride, who's eating his spray at the moment. Goddard looks to be okay. A bit rueful there, but these things will happen in such dreadful conditions. Jasmine Jafar in fifth. Two red and white cars are Alex Lynn in sixth and Pipo Durrani in seventh. Ivan Carlos Sainz Jr. race one winner. He's in eighth place from tenth on the grid. Felix Sorales, his dad, is a powerboat racer, so maybe that's helping him in these conditions. But a great race three win and great qualifying in Alton Park. And he's backed that up here as well, raced in Formula Renault. So he's got some European experience, or British experience at least. But for the first time here at Monza, really producing the goods. And in these conditions, starting from pole is definitely half the job. Again, as he picks up speed, coming through the standing water on the left of the track, he's making sure he keeps his tyres cool, doesn't want them to overheat if the track starts to dry out. Not much chance of that, it's still raining cats and dogs. And in the background there, Jack Harvey doing the same. Long way back, third place now, Pietro Fantin. So is it boiling down to two previous race winners, Jack Harvey and Felix Sorales? So far, we are having a different race winner each time out. And could it be 18-year-old rookie Felix Sorales who claims the first second time win? At the moment, he's certainly got every opportunity to do so. And this is all about concentration, keeping the speed up, but absolutely vital to keep the concentration. Make no silly errors. Coming down the gearbox in two the Parabolica <laughs> in the spray with Pipo Durrani in front teammate Alex Lin you can see his light flashing just about but as the speed picks up Lin and Jasmine Jafar all but disappear and the camera giving you a fantastic view of what the driver can see essentially the grandstands and nothing in front onto the last lap here we go down the inside is he going to take one is he going to take two is he going to avoid the white line in the middle of the road oh is he going to hang on his teammate comes back and alex lynn tries to go around the outside and has to jump the curbs to hang on to sixth place and that means durrani is uh, waving his hand there going come on you can't do that well, he'll lose it in the steward's office if he does finish in sixth place at the line because he gained an advantage there by uh, going outside the track limits. What Durrani's got to not do now is have an accident trying to get by. He looks again, number three car, can't squeeze through for sixth position. But Alex Lynn, very, very offline into the Roger. And again, I would have my second hand on the wheel there. I know he's annoyed Pipo Durrani. It's only six position and you do yourself a far greater injustice having a monumental shunt because you've only got one hand on the wheel when the car steps out on you. Out of the Lesmos, still following the turquoise and white Jasmine Jafar as out of Ascari for the final time, understeer all the way through there despite the big grooves in those wet weather Cooper tyres for our pole man and race leader Felix Sorales. You can see from the marshals under the umbrellas, tucked away there, it is still absolutely pelting with rain. And Sorales into the Parabolica safely. Final lap, final corner. He will head to the chequered flag to claim win number two of the season. He is the first man to take a second win in the British Formula 3 International Series. Jack Harvey in second position. And I should think they, as well as everybody else, will be mightily glad that that is all over. And they'll be praying for a bit of dry later on. Battle for fifth, Jasmine Jafar ahead of Alex Lynn. Pipo Durrani here in seventh. 
you've got to anticipate he will be moved up ahead of Alex Lynn in the final results. No problem, so for Felix Sorales, I think. He shot through the chicane, but it wasn't a deliberate move to take an advantage. And I think they'll have to allow a little bit of tolerance for the filthy weather conditions. So, Pipo Durrani still accelerating hard out of the first chicane. Let's hope he has seen the chequered flag. Slow cars in front, including his teammate. And he goes right over the back of Alex Lynn's car. That was a big impact. He clearly did not see the chequered flag in the spray of two cars in front. Alex Lynn's car is damaged. Durrani's much more so, I suspect. Take a look at this. Lynn's still going quickly, then they start to catch cars in front. That's a terrifying view as he curls up into a ball to protect himself. Youch! Well, confirmation of the result then. Tivashen Padiacci claims his first win in the national class. Pietro Fantin ended up in third, Jack Harvey second, with our race winner for the second time, Felix Sorales. Really wet out there. Um, I just tried my best to stay on the track. I wasn't really pushing. I noticed I had a big gap at the at the beginning of the race, so I just you know kept working at it and breaking later and later. I wasn't very comfortable with the track. It was just really damp. But you know, at least I got a win today. I started pull yesterday, but you know the pit stop strategy didn't work. But in the end, I'm finally in P1 again.